Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Tuesday, June 26, 2012. I am David Domzowski, founder of The Financial Bin and host of FB Radio. Now, before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share a few quick notes. First off, Landlord Intervention. It's finally here. Financial been released. Landlord Intervention, How to Acquire and Manage Rental Property Last Week. The book is by author Joseph L. Brown, who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. It is the second installment in our intervention book series, Entrepreneur Intervention being the first. Brown gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. You can pick up your copy, paperback copy right now on Amazon and our Create Space e-store for just fourteen ninety nine. Head over to financialbid.com, click on Landlord Intervention for more information and to purchase your copy. We'll we'll let you know when the ebook is available. Now let me introduce you to our guest. His name is Mike McCallowitz. Mike is the founder and president of Obsidian Launch and author of the Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. And he's here to tell us about his newest book, The Pumpkin Plan. Mike, welcome to F B Radio. Hey, thank you so much for having me, David. It's, it's a thrill to be here. Oh, no problem at all. It's a pleasure to have you on. So, Mike, we're just going to jump right in. The, the first question I have for you is, can you give the listeners a brief description of what you did prior to starting Obsidian Launch and releasing TPA? Yeah, yeah. So uh, kind of how I got started was um, actually on a, in a drunken stupor, basically. I, I was working at a local computer store and uh, after I graduated college and just couldn't take it anymore. And I went out for drinks with another guy that worked there. And, uh, you know, David Liquid Courage is, is the miracle worker. After quite a few beers, I said, I'm going to start my own business. And uh, I, I, I actually left a kind of a slurring message uh, quitting uh, my current job uh, for my boss. And the next morning I regretted making that decision. But he, he wouldn't hire me back. So I, I kind of kind of stumbled my way in, which, you know, I don't recommend that for other people necessarily, sure. but I don't know if I would have ever pulled the trigger. So I uh, started a business in computers. I was very fortunate through a lot of hard effort, a lot of, through a lot of failures. It ultimately started to grow. I sold it uh, to private equity about eight years after I started it. Then I had a second company in computer crime investigation. That was kind of the big potato. Uh, mm-hmm. I had that one for two and a half years and sold it to a Fortune 500 <clears throat> and then moved on to write the Toilet Paper Entrepreneur and now the Pumpkin Plan. So, Mike, were you – okay, you, the drunken stupor story, I, I love it. But, I mean, did you did you maybe always feel you had that entrepreneurial desire in you? I, you know, honestly enough, I would say no. I, I didn't have an inkling no. for it. No, and my parents – I remember them – after I went to college, my father said, did, Mike, the day you graduate, get that one corporate job because that's what he had and live through it for your life. And that's why I, I really believed it. The problem was that I, I couldn't get the job. I, I interviewed and no one would hire me. Um, so I, I settled for this uh, this computer job, uh, this computer store, gotcha. and it became frustrating. I, I wanted the way out. I, I wanted something different. I didn't envision entrepreneurship, but when I when I finally started doing it, I was like, oh, my God, I love this. I love it. So, so Mike, for those who may not know, could you tell us a little bit about Obsidian Launch and how it all works? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's kind of shifted over time. So I started Obsidian Launch as my third company with the intention of being an angel investor. So I brought on uh, over the years about 15 companies, and I've come now to call myself the death investor because I I collapsed maybe uh, 14 of them. I've I've one left that's doing well, and the other ones have either faded away or gone out of business. And uh, I recognize that's clearly not my talent as as an investor. So um, I just you know would would throw money at anything. It's just stupid. But what's come out of it is I started writing the books, and a lot of people started approaching me with requesting consulting, how to kind of reinvigorate an existing business, and that I, I have a knack for. So I started a, another startup called Prevendus Group, and that's what we're doing. So I write you know my books, Toilet Paper Entrepreneur and The Pumpkin Plan, and now have this new startup called Prevendus Group that's replacing Obsidian Launch. Gotcha. Great. So can you tell us a little bit about the pumpkin plan? I, I, I believe it, it is out, correct? Yeah, well, the pumpkin plan – no, we're, we're listening in early. The pumpkin plan comes out July 5th, so it's still – Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So a week and a few days away. But, gotcha. uh, yeah, so the, the pumpkin plan 
what I did, David, was when I was growing my first company, I, I really struggled in on the early years. It was very fear driven. I was just terrified of of failing. I, I needed I needed a check, you know, I needed a paycheck of some degree to pay for for myself, and also I had a young family, my wife and child. So it was very fear driven. And I hired my first business coach, and he kind of there was this epiphany thing he he said. He goes. He goes, most of the things you're doing right, and it's true for, for almost all entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. it's really just a 5% change that needs to happen. It's a small few things, but if you make that change, all the differences occur. Well, at the same time, you know, a few days later, I was flipping through a newspaper, and I saw this guy that had grown a giant pumpkin, and what caught my eye in there, in the, in the first sentence, he goes, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just like any ordinary pumpkin farmer. I just do 5% of the stuff differently. And I was like, oh, my God, that was my aha moment. I studied yeah. pumpkin. I studied pumpkin farming, uh, believe it or not, for about a year, and I discovered that pumpkin farmers that grow these colossal pumpkins change a few things, and it's very uncanny, but it applies exactly and directly to business. If we change these sure. same few things, our companies start responding with explosive growth. So, so I applied it in my business. My business started taking off. My second business, I did it from the get go. It, it just hit it. Uh, I'm applying it to my books, actually, same method, and now I'm, I'm consulting companies to do the same process. So what's your goal with the, with the pumpkin plan, Mike? So, well, my goal, my dream is to, to touch a million entrepreneurs. I mean, that, that's my big vision is that hopefully sure. not a million entrepreneurs will hear of it or at least be inspired by it or, hear, or, or get the, borrow the book from somebody. I don't care how the word gets to them. But I, I want entrepreneurs to recognize that <laughs> – you know we're in a tough economy right now, and it's not the government right. or the world, the governments of the world that are going to fix it. It is the entrepreneur, and we have to perform at a level like we've never performed at before. And I'll tell you one thing: it, it is impossible, David, for us to work harder. Not I don't know a single person that can work harder. And, and the thing is, we don't need to. We just need to work differently. We need to work smarter. And so I hope people start learning this process by hook or by crook. I don't care if they buy the book. I, mean, I love that. But but if they borrow the concepts, if they read it online, just to try building their businesses in a whole new, different way, so that they can see bigger results and uh, you know, in a, in a grandiose scheme, you know, change the economy around for all of us. Well, Mike, may, maybe expanding on that on that uh, idea of the five percent change that entrepreneurs can make. What what is the biggest mistake, let's say, startup entrepreneurs make, and what they can do to re- what can they do to resolve it or even prevent it? Yeah, so so the biggest mistake that, that startup entrepreneurs get into, David, is the um, the do sell do sell process. What the do sell process is, is that we we sell some work to a client, we get excited, we got it, and now all our attention goes on to doing the work for that client. But while we're doing that, our attention is off selling. When we finish a project, we go back and we're like, oh my god, I got no freaking clients. So then all our attention goes on selling and not doing. Once we get another client, then we jump back to doing, and our sales keep on going up a little bit and mm-hmm. dropping back. So we need to break out of this trap of sell, do, sell, do. And the key here is systemization. When we do something for a client, we need to spend the extra time, and it does take extra time, but to develop a system while doing it so that the next go around, we can give it to other people or possibly other things to get the same result. That way... Stage two of an entrepreneur is mastering the selling process, adhering to selling, 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 having systems doing, and then get systems to sell, and now the entrepreneur can step away and be kind of this master puppet, kind of the wizard of eyes, pulling the strings and so forth, while other people and other things execute the doing systems and the selling systems. So, so Mike, what, what about you? But let's take it and, and focus on you a little bit here. What are some of the biggest mistakes maybe you made? Well, you, you mentioned being an investor too. Maybe as an entrepreneur <laughs> and an investor, what are what are some of the biggest mistakes that you made, and how'd you how'd you learn from them? Yeah, so tons of mistakes. So, the, so some some of the mistakes are doing stuff that I really wasn't passionate about, but I saw easy money opportunities. So when I got into computer networks, I, I enjoy technology as a hobby, um, but I don't eat sleep and drink technology. Um, I can hang with great, the great ones, but I can't, cannot hang with the absolute best of them. Uh, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs mistake that they say, oh, I can do, I can do you know, all these things. But can do doesn't translate into I can do it better than anyone else. So right. I made the thing of going into certain industries where I wasn't, it wasn't my absolute passion. The problem with that is then over time, I get drained, and I was like, oh, I'm exhausted of doing this thing. 
what saved me in those circumstances was to find a piece of that business where I was truly passionate about it. So the biggest mistake I made, and I see other entrepreneurs do this too, is going where the trend is. You know, social media is hot mm-hmm. now. Every mother and their mother's mother is like a social media specialist. If that's not who you are, don't freaking do it because the people that do love it and they eat and sleep and drink this stuff, they're going to eat us up. They're going to destroy us. Um, so we all need, and, and I've learned this for myself too, is go where I'm passionate. That's what failed me as an investor too. I, I tried investing in companies because I thought it was cool and exciting, but really I don't eat, sleep, and drink investing. Uh, I don't do any of the analytical stuff, and, and, and that killed me. And I lost you know, a boatload of money just being stupid uh, because I, quote, unquote, can do things. The, the answer is ultimately not what can you do, what can you do at a level that no one else can do it. That's where you need to perform. Mike, what does it mean to be a TPE, or, or I guess maybe in the pumpkin plants case, to be a 5%er? Yeah, all right. Well, so, yeah, so, and, and they're a little bit distinct. So a TPE, the concept, it stands for Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. It's the ultimate bootstrapper. And uh, it's so funny. I just got back into my house. Uh, I'm working from home today uh, to, to call in with you, David. And I came back from Philly. I'm in the New York area to meet oh. with one of the a person uh, that read my first – he read my book about four years ago. He's one of the first guys that called me and said, I read Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. And he liked it, and he, we were talking. He said, my dream is to start a restaurant. Well, he started one three years ago. He invited me down to his restaurant. It's called Brin and Danes in the Philadelphia area. It is exploding. Uh, it is explodingly successful. I was down there. The place was packed. And what I loved about meeting with him, I was just so excited for him, was he represents the ultimate TPE. And what it is means that in, uh, looking outside the box for every opportunity to not only spend less money, but to do things that bring in a lot more uh, revenue. One example was all his tables were on top of whiskey barrels. I was like, wow, set you. Tremendously. Like a whiskey yeah. barrel. They were beautiful. He goes, no, no. He goes, I called Jim Beam, um, I guess that whiskey, and he goes, yeah, I told sure. him I'm a new restaurant and that I, uh, I want to use their whiskey barrels. And they said, after a little negotiation, just you know, as long as you pay shipping, which was two hundred dollars for ten of them, they sent a little truck wow. over. He got pay, he got ten incredible details for two hundred dollars. The other thing, and this is what blew my mind, his facility was gorgeous. I said, "How did you afford this?" He's like, "Oh, this is this was supposed to be Starbucks, but when Starbucks was building their buildings, they decided about two a year ago, I think they said they're going to stop building new franchise locations." He goes, this one was just completed when they announced it. He goes, I called them that same day and said, I'm looking to lease a space. He got it for a song. It's a oh, beautiful man. For a song. And, Dave, you wouldn't believe this place. It looks like a multi-million dollar chain restaurant. It's one location. He's crushing it there, and his overhead is practically nothing. Uh, that's what the PE is. Uh, and then getting on to the 5%, the, the pumpkin plan, is once we have a business that's established and running, meaning we have some degree of confidence that if we just keep working hard, it's going to generate revenue. Then we need to sit back. and We need to evaluate our business and determine of all the things we're doing, what is the 5% of the things we do that bring the most benefit? Who are the 5% top clients that are bringing in the most revenue? 5% of products or services that we offer that bring in the most opportunity. Who's the 5% of our staff? Maybe we have two or three employees. You know, who's that one person besides myself that is the best person? Then I ask, how do I copy more of them? How do I clone that best employee? How do I find more people like them? How do I clone my best uh, clients? Because can you imagine your number one client, if you had 100 of them, I guarantee everyone listening to this this call right now would have a multi-million dollar business if they could just clone their top client. client. So we need to focus on the top 5% and then do everything to amplify and grow that. You know, Mike, after the interview, I'd, I'd love to send you an email and get more information about that restaurant. I'm actually in the Newtown area uh, about 45 minutes outside of Philadelphia, so I'd love to be able to promote that and maybe even have the the guy on and talk a little bit about it. So that that would be that would be great. I I appreciate that. Uh, next question I have for you is, uh, you know, who mentored you when you first started? You know, every, they they say, you know, I guess it's one of those things that, you know, you, you learn from someone who's been there. So who mentored Mike Michalowicz? So he's in Horsham, so just in case that's near your area, that's the part. Of oh yeah, absolutely. 
All right, the Brennan, Day, Brennan Danes, it's called. you got to go. So my first mentor, uh, mentor, and he's been with me ever since. His name is Frank Minitola, and uh, he came in. He's the one who taught me this 5% rule. And it was, I, I got to story, share a story because it was hysterical. I, I go to a chamber meeting in my local town. I've had my business for three years. I'm doing only 250000 in revenue, which, I, by the way, I thought that would be huge, but I was still taking home $0. So I was, you know, that's wow. still struggling for me. So I'm like, I need to get someone that can help me. I meet this guy. I hire him. He comes in. He'd grown an $80 million company. So I was like, he's got to know something. He comes in. Uh, he interviews me and my three employees, and he asks everyone to leave, and I'm there by myself, David, with him. And he looks at me. He goes, uh, his first word, he goes, you don't want to be that guy. And I'm like, what? So that guy, like, you don't want to be that guy that retires, sits in that rusty lawn chair with drool dripping down your face, regretting the life you lived. And I'm like, you're a business coach? Like, what kind of freak is this? He goes, no, you know he goes, I can predict your future. And this is really what drove it home. He goes, I can predict the predict the future for you, Mike, or for any entrepreneur. He goes, where you are today is a direct result of the last five years of your actions. So everything you've done to this point has brought you to today. And he goes, I can see from this interview you're continuing those actions. So I know with absolute surety five years from today you'll be in the same position. And five years from that, the same position until you retire, and you'll run down your face. And that kind of hit home with me is that if I continued the behavior of work harder, work harder, work harder and not getting progress, nothing was going to change going forward. So Frank was my first mentor, and he's the one who then told me, you've got to make this, these small few changes to see the big end results. Wow. So, so he was the one that really keyed you on that 5%. So what, what are maybe some of the things that you tweaked to, to, to get yourself over that hump? First thing, it was interesting. Uh, the, the first thing I tweaked was was changing, and, and Frank actually did it in that moment when he told me about this, the the you know, kind of the old guy regretting his life, socks pulled up to his knees, drool rolling down my face. That really hit home, and I asked Frank many years later. I said, "Why did you do that? Because it, it scared me." And he goes, "That's exactly what I wanted." He goes, "The biggest thing is to recognize." Most entrepreneurs will never change because change is fearful. All the what ifs, you know, what if I try this and it fails? What if I lose more money? What if, what if? He goes, the only way he's ever found to change an entrepreneur's behavior is to make them more scared of their current life than the alternative of trying something new. So he goes, mm-hmm. my job in that first meeting was to scare you so bad, Mike, about where you were headed that you were willing to try the change. So that was the first tweak was to really become, as crazy as it sounds, terrified of what I was doing enough to change. The, the second thing I did that Frank taught me, um, and, and is part of the pumpkin plan, was I started firing clients. And, and that sounds crazy, too. But what, you, what I did, and what I think every entrepreneur should do, is I evaluated all my clients up to that point. I didn't have many. I had like 30 clients. Um, but one or two of them were spending the real money with me. Twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, and many of them, maybe ten of them, were spending like basically nothing—a thousand dollars or less, you know, five hundred. And interesting, it's those small clients that spend very little money that are the biggest complainers. They <laughs> always need attention. They're the squeaky wheels. Mm-hmm. So Frank had me do an exercise, which he it made me calculate my hourly wage. So I look at a client that spent five hundred dollars with me, and then I figure out how many hours I spent servicing them. And some of them I was spending like, you know, 100 hours, like a ridiculous amount of time. I was literally less money servicing that client, $5 an hour, than I could have if I was working a McDonald's job. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> For the two top clients, I, they spent $10,000 with me, and I spent like 30 hours with them. Well, wow. that was like, now we're talking $100 an hour, $400 an hour. And Frank said, Mike, you got to fire those lowest clients. You've got to get rid of them. He goes, you want to do something really great? Give them to your competition. Let them be distracted by them. <laughs> what happens is, first of all, you actually start becoming more profitable because you, many of us are losing money on our worst clients. So just by firing them, serve more money, we actually make more money just by not doing that work. Literally, if we've got no other work for the rest of our lives, we still make more money because we don't have people that we're losing money on. But secondly, it frees up 
lots of time to focus on the best clients, grow those best clients, get more work from them, and find their clones out there in the world and start duplicating them. Mike, uh, gun to your head, what is one piece of advice, just one, that you would offer to to the Gen Y entrepreneur out there trying to start something? Yeah, so go all in. It sounds crazy, right? Go all in. This is why it's an important piece of advice. A lot of people go in half-assed, but plan B, plan C, plan D, and they only do things partially. If you go and do something partially, you'll have a competitor that's going in full-time on that. They're going to win. The, the, the analogy of this, by the way, is, is Texas Hold'em. I, I'm playing tomorrow night. I play once a month with my buddies. We play tournament nice. style. And it's freaking awesome. And <laughs> what I figured out, the only way that game, the only way there's winners and losers is when someone goes all in. Because until that happens, it's just chips moving around. Small bets here, small bets there. Chips mm-hmm. move around. Some accumulate some, some lose some. But when someone makes an all-in bet, that is their big statement saying, I'm doing it. And either they win a huge hand or they lose. But the only way that game will ever end is when ultimately there's an all-in bet. Now, the nice thing about entrepreneurship is you can determine what the best all-in bet is for you, something you're passionate about, something where there's customer demand something that you can scale, you can have other people doing it for you. When you can combine those elements, when you have it figured out, put everything into it, you probably will win. But even if you lose, there's always another season, you can go for it again. But if you if you don't go all in, you're playing just to get on first base, you're never going to score. Mike, I really appreciate it. This has been fantastic. Last thing I have for you, where can people pick up a copy of the Pumpkin Plan and get in touch with you? Yeah, thanks for saying that. You can get a at your local bookstore or on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. And if you want to check out what I'm doing, just try your best spelling of Mike McCallowitz on Google. If you can't do that, just type and it'll find me. All right, fantastic. But we'll, we'll make sure to put it up there in Financial Event for anyone who can't quite spell that, uh, what is that, Polish name? That's what it looks like. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Mike, I really, appreciate, I really appreciate you joining us, and you have a great week. Hey, David, take care. All right, take care of yourself. Bye. All right, everyone out there, that was Mike McCallowitz. And if you can't see it on financialbin.com right now, it is M-I-C-H-A-L-O-W-I-C-Z. Hope, hopefully you got all that. Now make sure to check him out at MikeMcCallowitz.com, ToiletPaperEntrepreneur.com, and ObsidianLaunch.com. We'll make sure to post all those on financialbin.com as well. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank Mike for taking the time out of his busy schedule uh, to make uh, take about 15, 20 minutes for us here. And make sure to check out financialbin.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Gen Y. And don't forget to pick up your copies of Landlord Intervention and Entrepreneur Intervention and the Pumpkin Plan as well. Till next time, I am David Domzowski. Thank you for Thank you for listening. Appreciate it.